Alright, so in this video I'm gonna be explaining another important article with the title Boosting Domain Adaptation by Discovering Latent Domain. So this paper in 2018 is very important and the other one are the relevant uh, articles. For example here, Discovering again latent target domains. Current uh, domain adaptation methods based on deep architectures assume that the source samples arise from a single distribution. However, in, the, in practice, most datasets can be regarded as mixtures of multiple domains. In these cases, exploiting single source domain adaptation methods for learning target classifiers may lead to suboptimal, if not poor, results. In addition, in many applications, it is difficult to manually provide the domain labels for all source data points. For example, latent domains should be automatically discovered. This paper introduces a novel convolutional neural network architecture, which automatically discovers latent domains in visual datasets and exploits this information to learn robust target classifiers. Our approach is based on the introduction of two main components, which can be embedded into any existing CNN architecture a side branch that automatically computes the assignment of a source sample to a latent domain, and novel layers that exploit domain membership information to appropriately align the distribution of the CNN internal feature representations to a reference distribution. You see the idea behind our framework, we propose a novel deep architecture, which given a set of images automatically discovers, automatically discover multiple latent source domains and use this information to align the distributions of internal CNN feature representations of sources and target domains for the purpose of domain adaptation. So here the, we have k source domains and we have this target domain, the probability of these. So we, we model the source, dom source data as a set of IID observations from a mixture distributions. So this coefficient is just the probability of sampling from a source domain S sub i. Similarly, the target or IID from the marginal distribution. So our goal is to learn a predictor that is able to classify samples from the target domain. So we have three difficulties. The distributions of sources, the target can be drastically different, making it hard to apply a classifier learned on one domain to the others. And we also lack direct observation of target labels. And finally, the assignment of each source to its domain is unknown. So that's why we need this multi-domain uh, domain adaptation layers. For example, in these references, you see that these layers are motivated. For example, like previous video, I was talking about this one, that you can just uh, normalize it with this mean and variance, but put it, uh, we were talk I was talking about AlexNet that for at, at each fully connected layer, the next one is this domain adaptation. Then the next layer is again fully connected. Then again, uh, domain adaptation, like this. 
So this approach requires full knowledge, unfortunately. It's very interesting, but it requires full domain knowledge. Sometimes we don't, we don't have the knowledge. We, we need to, to model them as latent val variables. So we define the global input distribution, Q sub X, which is a linear combination of some uh, probability of some domains. And as I said, pi sub D is just the probability of sampling from D. And Q is just the QD is just the domain specific distribution. We, we know the normal mean and variance. So a maximum likelihood estimate can easily give us this, uh, it gives us a mean and variance. So clearly Q sub D condition on X is known for all samples for which we have domain information. The missing domain assignment probabilities are inferred from the data from the data using this domain prediction network. But what is that domain prediction network? We split the network into domain prediction branch and classification. So like previous uh, video that I talked about this thing that you have AlexNet on the left that you are fully connected then domain adaptation layer again fully connected then domain adaptation layer so this is the block that they have designed we want to estimate theta which comprises all training parameters of the classification and domain prediction branches while taking advantage of both labeled and unlabeled. So a main difficulty lies in the fact that when employing a discriminative model, the unlabeled samples cannot be used to express data likely. So we can exploit the unlabeled data to define a prior distribution over the network's parameters. So we define this uh, posterior distribution over theta, where for uh, notational convenience, we have omitted some dependencies. So if we maximize this, this probability, this posterior probability, if we maximize it, we obtain a maximum posterior estimate. So the first term here is the likelihood of uh, theta that we can model it because it's IID on the training samples. So we denote by this F sub C the output of classification branch of network for a source sample. The predicted probability having class Y sub I for convenience of notation. Uh, so similarly, the next term is probability of D sub S. So we just use the likelihood again, multiply all of these. And, but this time, this D sub I is the domain corresponding to X sub I. And to define our prior so the next one is prior probability of theta over parameters. We exploit all available unlabeled data, biasing our classifier towards exhibiting low, low uncertainty on the labeled samples. However, we introduce a prior term, the last one, the last one is probability of theta condition of x sub s exclude s hat so what is that for this, because this is another uh, prior which exploits source sample points with missing domain labels uncertainty uh, when pre predicting class labels can be measured 
in terms of this empirical this is an empirical entropy and similarly the uncertainty of predicting the domains could be like this this is again a kind of empirical entropy so pi of theta can be obtained as distribution with maximum entropy under this constraint and similarly it can be regarded maximum entropy under this constraint uh, where these are defined desired average uncertainties for both class and domain predictions respectively so if you work on the optimization, you will see that the solution is as explicit as this one. And this lambda C, lambda D are Lagrange multipliers. Because you know we have a constraint optimization, these are constraints optimization, so we need some Lagrange multipliers. Uh, in practice, this optimization in equation 5, and we want to optimize this one, can be replaced by the equivalent minimization of negative logarithm of uh, likelihood. So these four terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, can be interpreted as two log losses and two entropy losses. So these are two log losses, these are two entropy losses. Entropy loss, log loss. So since the classification branch has a dependence on domain prediction via MDA layers, so this is domain prediction, for example, then we have a classification, classification problem. The, the network learns to predict domain assignment probabilities that result in a low classification loss. In other words, the network is free to predict domain membership that do not necessarily reflect the real ones as long as this helps improving its classification performance so we have created another trouble <clears throat> so these are the uh, office data sets comparison of different methods using AlexNet you see different source and target for example if you go from this source to this target you will see for this paper has uh, this accuracy different data sets like office 31 office caltech data sets so we see some of them are when you, we when we go from different sources to different targets we have different performance because some of them are easier because of the data sets because of other uh, important things <clears throat>